Hey, YouTube. When I asked for a promo code for EG's drum machine uh, Pulse, I also got a copy of EG Wave Shaper, which is a surprisingly complex wave shaper that's got a really simple interface. Like what you're seeing right now is all of it. Like this is it. Uh, but it is capable of some very uh, interesting sounds and uh, I'm going to enjoy showing this off. Uh, I'm going to turn off oscillator two. So right now we're just listening to the wave, which is uh, presently on just a sign. And we can assign this to anything. I'll make this ramp here. And we can also assign a second wave, anything else. Kind of the square thing here. And now we've got an A to B, which is gonna morph between our first and second waves. So if I bring up this attack of the morph, so you'll actually be able to hear it. You see how it's changing shape over time. Uh, let me tame that a little bit because right now the filter is not doing anything and it's a little abrasive. Uh, you gotta give just a little bit of cue for it, this filter to work at all. So if it's not working for you, try giving it some cue. Uh, so that is already amusing, uh, but we can actually get in here and draw our own waves. So uh, like this is too sharp. So let's Try to make this a little less brittle. Alright. Or maybe that that final form is a little too clean, so we want to dirty it up a bit. We could Here, let me expand this so you can see it in all of its glory. We can draw in these little things that are just screwing up the wave. And that's already sounding a lot less clean. So let's hear what these sound like now going from one to the other. I think I might have made that just a little too messy. I'm going to come in here and clear off that bit. So that was like really fast. Like I, less than a minute, I've got something that's a good base of something. Um, and we can mo move on to like mixing in a regular virtual analog. that has got uh, four different uh, waves here. I'll throw in a square. And bring down our wavetable so that this is acting as kind of like an accent to the square rather than the focus here. And there's also a sub. Um, actually, if you listen to that, it's it sounds like that's way too low. So by mixing the different, the three different elements here, we've got a really, really big sound all of a sudden. That is a mean bass. Uh, and I'm not even using any of the uh, modulation. Like we've got two different LFOs and two different uh, envelopes. I'll show you the uh, LFOs first. Um, let's try assigning this to the detune, the second oscillator. Um, You're seeing how it's progressing both on the knob and then there's a line over on the, the wave that it's going through. And we can actually draw in on this wave too. Uh, so we could say, give me a slightly less weird oscillation like this. And this can be really handy when you're doing things like uh, this detune, right? Because like, you wouldn't want it to necessarily be detuning like all the way out. 
uh, but maybe sometimes you do. So like, this is something you couldn't do with any other oscillator where you're just like, at this one point, I want it to just completely freak out and, and go way up. Uh, let me increase the speed so this is a little faster here. I like how that, that's working. Uh, I'm actually uh, a little surprised with how well that uh, turned out. So I'm going to actually try to make it do a second little uh, spike like that. Uh, too big of a spike. All right. I feel like I'm a little too late on that. Let me bring this back to here. Now I'm basically using this as like a sequencer, right? Like I'm trying to sequence that second oscillator to... drift off a bit there and we can further shape this with the depth like say maybe okay the that's amusing but it's a little crazy let's try to calm it down here and on the envelope side it's basically the same idea except uh we only run through the envelopes once. So let's assign this to something. Um, I don't know how this is going to sound, but let's give it a shot. Uh, so right now it's just doing a ramp up and we're going into the crush. And we're not going to go all the way into the crush. Uh, bring that depth right down. Okay. Now let's try something else. Um, the FM ratio. Like, okay, I appreciate that that sounds super bizarre, but if I was going to make this like a half an hour long video. We could spend a lot of time screwing around with that FM and figuring out some kind of ratio that would be well suited to this wave where that would actually sound really cool. But right now, like I, I feel like that would definitely take me a half an hour to figure out the exact like, ratio that I'm pushing up with this, with this ramp versus the um, everything else that's going on. Uh, so let's not do that for right now, but uh, that was interesting. Um, we could try the low pass. Or, no, I want to go for the uh, filter. Just a lot of things. Oh, here we go. And you can't necessarily see this unless you're paying really close attention to the keys. I'm actually playing in uh, a little sequence here. But the envelope is continuing along on its progression. Um, it's not resetting it. Because right now I've got it set. Uh, if, if there's anything you're wondering, like what, what's going on with the keyboard, hit the keyboard in the bottom right panel. And uh, you can set all kinds of different things like uh, the... Um, a lot of different settings are hidden underneath there. Uh, going to mono here. Now it's going to reset every single time I change keys. So if that's what you're looking for, you're trying to do some sort of glide. Uh, it's quite amusing, so I'm going to leave that on. Um... <clears throat> see what else is good in here oh the crush has been left up let's try to that now without it so i actually don't like the way that it's cutting that filter way way down here uh in this envelope so let's start it off at about here and this is very uh different from the way a lot of filters uh, would be affected by an envelope. Usually you'd send a spike and then it, it decays down, but we're using this as like a, a, a riser.
Pull the four speed. But you see, it stops at the end there. It's not cycling like the LFO. That's the, the important distinction between these two different modulators. Uh, I'm really, really liking the sound that we're getting out of this. Like that is a very meaty, layered synth sound. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any way that we're going to want to screw around with the other effects here. Like the reverb, this is probably going to sound too muddy, but let's give it a shot. Oh, wait, okay, I got an idea, right? We'll, we'll take uh, envelope two, and we're going to do a reverse of envelope one. Um, or, oh, whoops, <laughs> I hit the X. All right, we're actually gonna take this down, right? So it's gonna start off high and then like work its way down. And actually we probably want it to kill it all together right here. And we'll assign this to the reverb. The speed's a little too slow and the depth's a little too high. Let's try this again. Uh, let's do one last thing here. I want to set... Um, one of these to pan. So this is our second LFO. And I want to do kind of like a hard left and right. Uh, let's hear how that sounds right now. I'm probably going to bring down that depth a lot. Oh, I. This is a, a teachable moment. I just screwed up. Um, at the end of this, uh, see how I have it ending at the bottom? But it's also starting at the bottom. So when it's, all right. Actually, that makes more sense than going the other way around. I guess it's not very well, like if I, I could hear it when we were having it play back. That, that felt a little odd, so. All right, that actually does make sense, though. It should be going down and it's coming up. Maybe I didn't have it all the way down. Let's try that again. Oh, screw it. Let's bring down the depth and increase the speed greatly. sure about that reverb we could be screwing around with the morph mix does that make sense let's give it a shot just to hear what that sounds like hmm uh this sounds like it's got some potential here. I actually want it to go the other way where we're coming up and then maybe we spike it like this. Yeah, this is probably something if you were inclined to doing dubstep, um, you could probably be doing something like that where you have lots of these cuts where it's, it's flickering back and forth between two different waves. You want to be doing that a lot faster and 
probably a lot more often. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's got the potential there. Um, I think that's all the, the important things I wanted to show you in this. I, I'm really impressed with how big of a sound you get from such a small interface. Like this is very uh, efficiently designed, and I appreciate that. I hope you've appreciated this video, and I want to thank very much all of my uh, Patreons uh, for making these videos possible. Take it easy, folks.